If for whatever reason you can't stand this sound, just shut off the video right now. That just means this build isn't for you because you're going to be hearing this sound a lot in this guide. Alright, here's my budget build for the Singer Barbarian. I see a lot of people talking mad smack about starting off as a barb early ladder because they don't have fancy AoE damage spells like Blizzard and apparently barbs are supposed to be really uh, reliant on gear to do damage. But the Singer Barb is a Chad that doesn't afraid of anything. Okay, except for maybe archers with fanaticism, but anyway. Seriously though, despite what others say, it's a really fun build that doesn't need expensive gear to hold its own. And you get to listen to raw 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 for the whole time you play it, which is pretty cool too. The Singer Barb's main skill, if you haven't already figured it out, is War Cry, where your Barb does this really manly shout that causes physical damage in an AoE. It also stuns monsters who happen to be near you because they're in awe of just how buff your barb is. So, what weaknesses does this build have? I gotta be honest, even compared to the other budget builds that I've covered, the Singer has low damage, it has limited AoE, and it eats up a lot of mana very quickly. But it has quite a few strengths that I would say can make up for it. The obvious one, of course, being battle orders, which is useful for solo play as well as group play. If you don't know what battle orders does, it's uh, this skill right here. It's one of the uh, war cries. Uh, this boosts stamina, life, and mana of everybody who's uh, in the AoE when you uh, cast battle orders. Uh, that affects not just yourself, but also members of your party. Uh, like other human players, and also uh, whatever minions or mercenary uh, you have active. So, uh, Battle Orders is huge. Your Whatever party you're playing with is going to love you for it. That's pretty nice to have. And you also get uh, Crowd Control from Warcry. It does damage, but it also stuns monsters uh, in the area of effect. So, uh, that's pretty nice uh, for keeping you alive. And the really big one that I'm going to put a lot of emphasis on is Find Item. Find Item, which is quite possibly the biggest reason to play a Barbarian, uh, generally speaking. The Singer kills slower than the other builds, but Find Item kind of makes up for it. So, what exactly does Find Item do? Well, Find Item is kind of like a second chance at getting loot from a monster, where you have, if you have a higher skill level, your odds of succeeding in getting loot from find item is going to be higher too. It's not affected by player count, so it's actually really good uh, for players one. Like if you're doing one player games, uh, find item works great. Um, oh, and this works on champion monsters, unique monsters. It even works on super unique monsters, as long as they're not part of a quest. So, for example, you can use Find Item on, say, Pindle Skin, which is probably one of the most popular places to farm as a Barbarian, but you're not going to be able to use Find Item on, say, an Act Boss like Bale. Yeah, uh, so basically, with Find Item, you go and defile some corpses, they're no longer usable, and you might get more items out of them. And we're going to talk a bit more about that uh, a little later. Congratulations! We're now Grave Robbers, and we're not even playing a Necro. Huzzah! Okay, great. So, let's talk about stats and skills. The assumption that I'm going to make for this character is that it's a low... well... I mean, in my character's case, it's a level 75 character with no points used. Now, in your case, you might not be level 75, uh, but my assumption here is that you've, say, respect your character, or you got, like, rushed through the game, you've done some uh, chaos runs or bail runs or whatever, but you don't really know how to build a barbarian that actually works, and you were hoping to get some guidance on a build that doesn't need something like two grief rune words to go and 
kill stuff. So yeah, uh, you're in luck. Um, that's kind of what this uh, video is going to be for. Um, so let's get it started with the uh, stat points. So you need enough strength to wear your gear. Uh, in this case, I'm going to put 40 points into strength. Uh, the reason being that the item that's probably going to require the most strength from the items that we're going to put on our singer barb uh, as part of this uh, build is going to be 70. Uh, it, it's probably going to be the boots. Uh, I'm going to probably buy a set of greaves from Anya later and that's going to have a 70 strength requirement. Later on down the line, you're going to want to consider uh, respecking your character uh, once you get a monarch shield because you're going to probably make spirit into that and then that's going to need 156 strength so i uh, got to keep that in mind but uh, for early on before you get it your spirit monarch uh, we can just stick with 70 strength now dexterity dexterity normally i would say that you don't put any points into decks uh, because your gear doesn't usually need it but one of the things we're going to be looking for on this barb are going to be, well, I guess uh, she's not selling it right now. But it's actually going to be uh, weapons, uh, preferably throwables from Mala. This is the quickest place to shop for it. Uh, throwables from Mala that have uh, plus to war cries. So I'm going to talk more about that later uh, when I start going over what gear this character needs. But just know that uh, a lot of the throwables that Mala sells uh, have a dex requirement of up to 65, sometimes even higher than that, but you want to avoid uh, getting the weapons that have, or the exceptional tier weapons that have a higher strength and dex requirement. So uh, it's safe to say, or a safe bet would be to put up to 65 points into dexterity. Uh, but again, I'm doing this now uh, just to try and keep things uh, neat for the progression of this video. Normally, what I would do is I would shop the items from Mala first. Um, what I'd be looking for are plus three war cries or possibly plus two war cries uh, throwables. And then once I find them, I would only dump as many points in decks as what their as what the highest decks requirement actually is. But uh, yeah, 65 should do it uh, for the most part in case uh, you end up with throwing spears. Uh, now, a lot of people might think, oh, we'll just dump the rest into Vitality. That's kind of how it works for most caster builds. But I personally like to push energy up to 100. Uh, you kind of need the extra energy on this build, especially before you get uh, Spirit. Now, I'm talking about Spirit Monarch. I'm talking about Spirit Swords. Um, I'm going to actually show that in a second, but yeah, um, yeah, without having the points in energy, I would have had 80 mana, you get only one point per energy, which is pretty crappy, I mean, that's kind of the nature of the uh, Barbarian as far as putting points in energy is concerned, but uh, early on, you do kind of need these points until you get gear uh, that boosts your mana. Uh, and then when you do respec later, you can get rid of the points from energy if you feel like it. But starting out, uh, it's nice to have the extra points of energy handy. Um, and of course, these uh, this energy is going to be... Or this pool of mana is also going to be increased by battle orders. Uh, and life is going to be boosted by battle orders too. So I'm going to talk more about that when we get to skills. But yeah, you can kind of see that if I put uh, dual spirits on that, uh, yeah, my mana pool goes way up, but, you know, if you're starting out and you don't have any gear, then, you know, you don't have that much mana, so, uh, you do need the points in energy, uh, for the time being, or at least I would suggest putting points in energy. And I have items in my, uh, stash, uh, but that's, uh, that's gonna be gear for this character that I'm gonna talk about a little later. Uh, the assumption for this character is that you don't actually have any gear on him to start. Um, I'm going to be building it from the ground up as if I didn't actually have any equipment. Uh, you can see that I have my default um, items, the hand axe, the buckler, and then just a scroll TP and ID. 
Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about the uh, gear later. So, Vitality, dump the rest of the points in a bit, and here you go. Here's your stat points. It's done for the most part. You have the strength and dex to wear your gear, and you have uh, points in the Vitality and Energy so that you can uh, cast your war cry enough times to kill packs, and enough points in the vit well the rest of the points in the vitality to obviously keep you alive. Now skills, um, skills you want one point into the one point wonders and combat masteries, uh, so increase stamina, speed, iron skin, and natural resistance. Uh, you're gonna want one point into leap. Now this is actually. Or this can be kind of useful if you need to reposition yourself, if you want to jump away from a pack, or if you want to jump into a pack. Leap is pretty useful for that. And you're going to get one point into find potion, which is a prerequisite for find item. And yeah, find item, again, I talked a lot about this already at the intro, but it's a super useful uh, skill uh, when you're MFing. And... Yeah, you're not going to put a ton of points into it, but it is a war cry. So as you get items that give plus to war cries, it'll not only boost the damage on war cry itself, but it boosts find item. And in addition, it also uh, boosts battle orders. So uh, very handy. Anyway, uh, rest of the points I'm going to allocate are going to be uh, all of the prereqs for Warcry, as well as uh, Warcry itself, and then one point into Battle Command. Then after that, you're going to want to max out Warcry. It is your main uh, killing skill here. And then you're going to want to max out Howl. Uh, beca because Howl is a uh, synergy for Warcry, so if you put points into Howl, it boosts damage on Warcry, so that's pretty good. And then, I would suggest putting points into Battle Orders. Now, if you wanted, you could try to go down this way in a taunt and then Battle Cry, but I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I think that early on, uh, you, need as, you, know, you need to max out Battle Orders because it's going to boost your Mana Pool, which is severely lacking. It's also going to boost your survivability and your Merc survivability when you get one. But, uh, I think with battle orders, uh, some people will put just one point into it, but that's not enough for um, the amount of mana that you're going to eat up with Warcry. Also, if you, uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you're playing in a party and you have like only one point into battle orders, uh, yeah, it's a little... It's not as good as actually having it max out to 20. Uh, it just makes things easier. Um, and then the rest of your points that you're going to put, uh, the, that you have left over, you're going to dump them into uh, one of the synergies, or one of the remaining synergies for Warcry. Uh, I would suggest putting it into Taunt over Battlecry. Um, now, something I want to talk about quickly. Uh, why max out Howl first uh, over Taunt or Battlecry? It's because Howl is one of the synergies for Warcry, like all of the synergies uh, give an equal amount of damage, but uh, the thing with Howl is uh, you're actually going to use Howl in some cases to scare away all of the monsters except for the unique monster, because uh, unique monsters are immune to Howl, but uh, regular monsters aren't, so... Uh, you can use Howl to scare away all of the uh, minions or regular monsters, and then you can just target uh, the unique monster. So Howl is one of the skills that you're going to use uh, pretty often, uh, especially if you're going to farm something like uh, Pindle or possibly Pits. Uh, and then also Howl depends on its skill level and your level. Um, if your level and Howl's level combined is too low, then uh, monsters are just not going to be affected by Howl at all. So, um, yeah, you got to make sure you max out Howl. Also, it increases the uh, radius of Howl, so that's kind of nice. Uh, taunt is going to be the next, probably the next skill that you would use. Um, you're not going to use it in 
the areas that I'm going to show in this uh, video, but uh, if you ever do something like trav, uh, usually when I do trav, I like to howl everything first, then I taunt them back in uh, to fight me, and then I use Warcry to hit all of them at once. So uh, for me, uh, maxing out taunt is pretty useful because it reduces their damage uh, while they hit, or while they're hitting me, or they do less damage when they hit me. So uh, that pretty much does it for stat points and skill points. And uh, yeah, I think at this point we can uh, talk about gearing up now. So the easiest way to get gold while you have no gear uh, would be to go into Nightmare Eldritch. Uh, you just need to do a few runs and sell whatever he drops. So I'm just going to show you kind of what a run looks like too. Um, I'll show you the playstyle. It's pretty straightforward. Once you oh okay hold on let me uh, do like I want to have a chance to talk here. Um, you can't cast battle orders inside town, so you actually have to go outside to do it. Okay, there's another pack there, but let's just pretend it's not there. So, yeah, you would cast your battle command, uh, which um, increases skill levels by one for everything. Uh, then you have battle orders to boost your health and mana, and then you have shout to boost your defense. Defense isn't very high right now, but uh, later when you get better gear, it'll be more useful. You kind of see. Uh, you go into the pack, you start spamming Warcry, then a little low on health, so I have to hurry a little bit, but um, yeah, you would go and use find item on the pack normally. I got unlucky with that one because there was a big pack of monsters. Uh, I should have held them off, but uh, I wasn't paying as much attention uh, as I should have there. Uh, so yeah, with the loot that he drops, uh, the loot that Eldritch drops, you basically take the items and then you sell it. Um, if you find something that you can use, then maybe you can just put that on, you can wear it. Um, but I'm just going to sell that. And yeah, you basically do this over and over. Uh, I like to start off with 100,000 gold for all the gear that I need. Uh, usually I can get that within 5 to 10 runs, maybe maybe more than that if you're unlucky. But point is, uh, you just want to get a bit of gold because you need to buy a lot of, or a bit of your starting gear uh, from the uh, vendors. I'll show what kind of gear in a second, but I'm just going to do one more Eldritch run, uh, start to finish. Okay, there you go. So, you just uh, leap in here. And then, after I Warcry a few times, I can howl the rest of the monsters away. And then, looks like I got a little lucky here because he spawned Stone Skin. Uh, that's why he didn't die from that. And then now that he's dead, I can uh, use I can use uh, my find item on the pack of monsters. And then that's basically it. So, something I wanted to mention quickly. Um, when you kill the whole pack, uh, you can use find item on just the unique monster, or you could try to use it on the whole pack. Uh, personally, I prefer to use find item on the whole pack, because the thing with this build is that you can't... Like, the way it works, you don't have, like, massive AoE. It's not like uh, Necromancer's Poison Nova or Corpse Explosion. It's not like... Uh, Druid's Hurricane, or anything like that. Your Warcry only reaches out about 5 yards uh, from your character, uh, which isn't really... which doesn't really have... Uh, which isn't really that uh, large of a radius, right? So, uh, what that means is you want to focus on uh, killing isolated packs. Uh, so that's why running locations like Eldritch or or Pendle uh, is kind of nice because uh, you just have a pack of monsters, you go in, you kill them, and then you use a find item uh, on them. Um, yeah, like, as you get into the late game uh, where your, par uh, your barb is doing champ packs in a level 85 area like Pits or running Pendle skin with high MF, then you can just focus on using find item on just the unique monster, but early on 
I think that uh, using fine item on every monster you kill is perfectly fine. Uh, right now, the odds of me getting another item, uh, if I use fine item, is, o is only 13%. But uh, as you get more gear, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, uh, you get more plus to barb skills gear, or plus to all skills, or plus to war cries, it'll boost uh, your fine item, and your odds to find something will be much uh, higher. So, yeah, with that said, uh, let's go and actually start trying to shop for the gear that I need. Uh, to shop the gear that I need, I'm going to start off by going to uh, Anya. She has a red portal next to her. Good morning. So I can kind of look through her wares quickly, and then step in through the portal, and step Good out. Morning. Ah, there you go. Here's a nice example of something I could use. Um, again, I had... Uh, for my runs, I didn't actually have 100,000 gold, but I left a million gold in the uh, stash uh, for... Uh, just to speed things up, so that I'm not just running over and over again. So, what we're looking for are 40 faster run walk boots from Anya. Uh, and we're also looking for a good set of gloves. Now... In my previous videos, uh, I usually prefer having gloves with plus to res, but for the Barbarian, uh, I actually prefer uh, getting MF. I feel like MF is, like with Battle Orders, uh, the Barb is already uh, pretty tanky. Uh, not just Battle Orders, but also uh, Natural Resistance, if you can get some items with like plus the Barb skills or plus the All skills. Um, and... Yeah, uh, you're going to want that MF uh, for when you kill monsters and uh, you use fine item on them too. Uh, because fine item also works with uh, MF. So uh, Anyway, so I found the boots. Uh, still looking for a set of uh, faster run walk boots. Um, I mean, I'm going to do a couple runs or a couple more attempts. I'm hoping for 40s. I don't like to settle for anything less than 40 faster run walk boots. But uh, sometimes you can get not just 40 faster run walk boots, but you can also get those 40 faster run walk boots with a second modifier. Like these ones have 30 faster run walk with 35 mana, but you can sometimes get something like 40 faster run walk with, uh, let's say, like 30 to light res, 30 to cold res. Um, you can't get it with MF, unfortunately, or else that would be kind of a. Uh, that would kind of be a given, but anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's my last attempt here. I'm just going to roll with these for now, um, because again, I don't want to take too much time uh, rolling for uh, 40s, uh, since I have to continue going over the rest of the gear that I need. If I were making this character for real, I would absolutely commit until I got 40 fast run walk boots, though, so. Uh, okay. Let's uh, talk to Larzik now. Uh, what can Larzik give us? He can give us uh, a belt. Now, for the belt, you want a plated belt. A uh, plated belt gives four rows, uh, or four rows for potions. Um, you would ideally like to have these, uh, whatever plated belt you use, with plus to life. Like, this one's got plus 17 to life, but... Um, you would ideally want something that has, like, plus 50, or maybe one that has uh, resistances. But, yeah, uh, the main thing that you need is a belt that has uh, four rows, um, with plus life as a secondary thing, I guess. Uh, don't spend too much time on uh, the belt, uh, I would say that, yeah, life is probably the best modifier, especially because it gets boosted uh, with battle orders, but uh, yeah, this one will do for now. So, moving on to armor. Uh, now, this is one that we're going to shop from normal. Uh, normal Charcy right over here. What you need? And yeah, I'm going to be looking for... Oh yeah, there you go. Good. Uh, first try, that's amazing. You're going to be looking for a two socket armor that you can put uh, the runes Tal and Eth into. Uh, Tal and Eth, uh, 
together uh, make the stealth rune word. So Tal and F, as you can see, it gives all these bonuses, faster run walk, faster cast rate, faster hit recovery, uh, poison res. Tal rune and Eth rune, where do you find these? Uh, these are relatively uh, low level rune words. Uh, you can get them from running normal countess. Um, yeah, like you can do some runs of normal countess to try and find the Tal and the Eth. Uh, you can also get the Tal rune from doing the uh, Act 5's second quest, uh, where you rescue the Barbarians. You get Ralort Tal from that, and you can do it for all three difficulties. So, if you're looking for a Tal, then you can get it there. If you're looking for Eth, you can get uh, that. Or, you, you can't get the, uh, the Eth rune from a quest, unless you, uh, you know, get it off of, like, a Hellforge or something. But... Yeah, uh, usually you're going to have to run Countess for it, or may you might be able to find it from uh, somebody who's just throwing runes away or something, because these are uh, very... Or these are runes that are very easy to come by. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, for stealth. Uh, for your helm, uh, your helm might be a little bit tougher to come by. Uh, you're going to be trying to make the rune word called Lore... Uh, for lore, you need a two-socket helm. Uh, let's... Here, I'm gonna try one more time, and if it's, uh, if not... If I can't find a two-socket, then I'll just, uh, use the Larza quest, uh, just to speed things up a little bit. There you go. Yeah, I'm just gonna use, uh, Larza quest over here. And, there you go. Oh, look, I magically found a two-socket, uh, cap. So, uh, yeah. If you go Ort and Soul into a lore, or into a cap, or a two-socket helmet of some kind, you get lore. It's a uh, rune word that gives um, a plus to all skills and a bit of light res and energy. Uh, so some pretty good bonuses. It boosts your war cry damage, but it also boosts uh, some of your other skills like find item, uh, battle orders, and so on. So where do you find the Ort and Soul? Uh, the Ort rune you can find from uh, the freeing the barbs quest. The soul rune is a l little bit tougher to come by. You can't get that from uh, running normal countess. Uh, you can't get that from... Uh, you can't get that as a guarantee for doing uh, some quest. Uh, where you're gonna have to find soul rune, uh, normally you would run cows for it, but I really don't think that uh, running cows with this build is particularly... Uh, efficient, uh, because it doesn't really have much AoE. It has the damage to run normal cows, but just uh, it does it much slower than other builds. Um, Soul Rune, you'll probably come by it as you kill monsters in the game. Uh, if you're really desperate to try and get a Soul Rune, you could run Nightmare Countess to try to get it. Uh, you can also try to run uh, Nightmare Trav, or a bit of Nightmare Trav to try and get some runes uh, and other equipment, with uh, Soul Rune being one of them. Uh, but again, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on lore because you'll probably find uh, better alternatives uh, even just playing through the game. This is just if you have the runes handy um, and it's like a readily available option as long as you have the uh, Ort Rune and the Soul Rune. Uh, but there are other places you can look for uh, a barb helm. Uh, for example, if you rescue Anya, uh, a lot of people rescue Anya, well, pretty much everybody rescues Anya so that you can get the uh, uh, Scroll of Resistance, but one of the other things that happens is that when you talk to Anya, she'll give you uh, a class-specific item. Uh, so in this case, for barbs, uh, they have class specific, or they have like their own uh, barb hel or barb only helmets. Um, so you can get uh, one from Anya uh, for each of the three difficulties. So there's another place that you can get uh, a helm. You can see that these were pretty awful helms, and uh, I also got one from Hell, um, and looks. Well, like this, this one's even worse than the other two. Uh, now, 
something to keep in mind, even though it doesn't show here, the rewards for uh, Hell are typically better than the ones from Nightmare, and the ones from Nightmare are typically better than the ones from Normal, but here you can see all three of them turn out to be kind of garbage. So in this character's case, uh, yeah, like I'm going to use Lore for now, but uh, when I find something better, I'll switch over to that. Okay, so uh, what's next? Uh, I see that our rings are missing. Uh, so where do we get rings? Uh, now, as it turns out, you can get rings from doing uh, two of the quests in the game, and that's uh, Act 1, Quest 3, and Act 3, Quest 2. So, uh, the search for Cain, I mean, I think uh, you're all probably familiar with that one. You would have to go to Stony Field, uh, Tristram, you have to rescue Cain, and then you would talk to Akara. And she gives you a magic ring in normal, and then she gives you a uh, rare ring in nightmare and hell, so you can uh, pick those up off of her. Yep. Uh, and sometimes you can get a good ring, but if you don't, then uh, oh well. I mean, ideally you would like to get. Oh, here's one that has a bit of res, so I can use that. Uh, no worries. Um, ideally, you want to find a ring of some kind that has. Uh, a ring that has FCR uh, because you need to boost your DPS not just by plus the skills but uh, by having faster cast rate uh, with your starting gear uh, like even having stealth rune word you get 25 FCR but if you can get say like two FCR rings with like uh, one spirit sword that would get you to the 63 FCR breakpoint, which is pretty good for uh, early game. Uh, so, yeah, I've already completed the uh, Gidbin quest. I'm not going to talk about the requirements for Gidbin quest, but uh, you kind of have to go to Flare Jungle, and then you have to find the Gidbin, and then you got to return it to Ormus. Uh, you can look up how to do that if you're not familiar with that. Uh, let me see what ring I actually got from Ormus. Oh, here we go. This one was better than the ones that uh, Akara gave me. Now, maybe with any luck, we'll get one even better from Ormus uh, and Nightmare. Oh, there you go. This one's got... I mean, this one doesn't have any resistances, but it has uh, plus 55 to mana, which is pretty good. And then, finally, Hell Mode. Here we go. Ormus. 22 and 24 fire res, so, uh, I mean, I could choose between either having more mana or more uh, resistances. Uh, honestly, I would save both of these rings uh, for if I were to ever do uh, Trav. Now, I'm not really doing Trav in this video, so it doesn't matter, but, uh, like, yeah, I'm going to use the uh, mana ring over the one that has uh, rare rings, or that has light and fire res, but you kind of get the idea as to uh, how getting the rings works from those two quests. Uh, you can also gamble for uh, rings if that's what you're looking for. Also, speaking of uh, gambling, uh, we're also missing an amulet, and for the amulet, you can wait for one to drop uh, by naturally just playing through the game, or uh, if you have a bit of gold, you could try to gamble for one that's decent. Oh, this one already has MF, so it's not the worst kind of amulet you can get. Ideally, you want an amulet that has plus three to war cries, or uh, like plus two to barb skills or something like that, but obviously you can't always get what you want. Hey, here, here we go. Here's one that has plus two traps for assassins. Okay, 19 MF, good. Um... Yeah, so that would be it for Amulet. Uh, now, what else do we have left? So, we've geared up everything at this point except for our uh, weapon and shield. Well, I guess in this case, uh, it's going to be weapon and weapon because we're a barbarian and we can dual wield. Uh, and what we're looking for anyway is going to be uh, two weapons that have plus two, or plus the war cries. Uh, ideally, plus. 2 or plus 3 to war cries is what we want. Um, and then the easiest way to do this is to shop uh, Hell Anya. Or sorry, uh, Hell Mala. 
and then you would just keep uh, refreshing her stock. Uh, the reason why I use Mala for this kind of thing is because her entire weapons page, or her miscellaneous page, has a lot of throwable items, um, and plus the Warcries can spawn uh, on those throwables. Uh, you see that we can actually get it from Anya too. Like, Anya also sells some throwables, but it's not nearly as many as what uh, Mala has. So I prefer shopping at Mala for my weapons. Now, I can keep going on and on at Mala, uh, trying to uh, keep refreshing the uh, shop until I found uh, Warcry uh, sticks of some kind, but uh, I had some already ready uh, in my stash for this video. So, yeah, you can see here we've got uh, one uh, balanced knife that has plus three to war cries, and the uh, balanced axe that has plus two to war cries. Um, this one also has the higher strength or er, dex requirement at 57. Um, so yeah, uh, we overshot a little bit with the uh, putting or putting dexterity at 65, but uh, that's perfectly okay. Okay, so at this point, our character is uh, pretty decked out. He has most of the equipment that he needs, uh, so what now do we need to uh, go for? Uh, right, so we're missing a, our Merc and his weapon. So our Merc, uh, the Merc that we want, is going to be Nightmare, uh, Act 2 Offensive. Um, Nightmare Act 2 Offensive is Might Aura. Uh, and Might Aura boosts damage. Now you can see here, I would normally go uh, and just hire, uh, let's say like a Sab, I guess that's his name. Um, but I already have my Merc uh, prepped, uh, Al Hazir. Uh, so uh, I'm going to use him. And yeah, what weapon is he going to use? Uh, this is kind of important because uh, you're doing your own damage with Warcry, but you're also going to want your Merc to contribute too, especially when it comes to killing unique monsters like uh, Pindleskin. Uh, you would shop for a good polearm from uh, Larzuk. I mean, assuming, of course, that you have a decent bit of gold uh, to do so. Uh, like some of the I think the most expensive pull arm I've uh, had to try to buy from Larzuk was like 200,000. But uh, yeah, I would keep doing this over and over. Uh, and I'd be looking for... Uh, I want a weapon that has a lot of damage uh, for my Merc. Uh, something I want to point out. You might think that maybe you could uh, open a cow portal next to Geed or Charcy in Act 1. Uh, and then try to refresh for a weapon uh, on those vendors. But uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can't shop elite items until at least Hell Act 3. Uh, because you see here in Larzak's shop, right, like, um, we have, we have uh, Pike and Halberd, but sometimes they can upgrade into exceptional and unique tier uh, items, um, but yeah, that can't happen in Hell Act w uh, 1 or Act 2, like they can't go to Elite. Uh, you can only get uh, Elite bases from shops starting in Hell Act 3, so uh, you gotta look out for that, and yeah, that's why I like to use Larzak here. Now, I'll save you the uh, trouble of watching me try to shop for an item. Uh, I have a few weapons uh, I'd like to show you. Um, I got lucky and I shopped this, uh, my current Merc's weapon, in about 20 minutes, uh, like prior to when I uh, started trying to record for this video. So, uh, yeah, this is not going to be your usual case uh, for a weapon that you're going to find. Like, you, you could try to hold out and try to look for like a really good uh, elite base uh, magic item that has like cruel modifier that gives it like somewhere between I think it's like 200 to 300 enhanced damage and then maybe like a second modifier like IAS but that would take a ridiculously long time um, even cruel's mod on an elite base is already pretty good um, 
and later on down the line you're probably going to want to switch over to Insight anyway so uh, honestly I would suggest uh, looking for something like even an exceptional polearm with 150 ED like this uh, or even any regular plain Jane uh, pull, uh, pull arm or pike or whatever that has the accrual uh, modifier. Even these do a pretty decent amount of damage. Uh, not as much as what my Merc's currently wearing, but uh, yeah, if you don't want to take too much time uh, shopping at the vendor, then uh, yeah, you can easily use these as alternatives. Okay, so next up, uh, where would I recommend farming in Hell? Uh, I've talked about all of the gear choices for myself and my Merc. So, yeah, uh, where can we use uh, this build, basically? Well, I'll give you three locations. Uh, three locations for this build. Uh, Eldritch. Uh, yeah, we already did an Eldritch run earlier. That was a nightmare, though. Um, we can run Eldritch, we can run Pindleskin, and we can run Pits. So, Eldritch, uh, why Eldritch? It's quick and easy. You already saw, uh, how, uh, it went earlier. Uh, you would just waltz in here, and then you would just, uh, use... Oh, and I got cursed, but that's okay. I can still, uh, kill him. Uh, you can also see just how mana-intensive the ability can get. I probably will kill Eldritch before... Oh, look at that man catcher. Nice. And I even found something else as well. Um, okay, go to town and ID these. Oh, Viper Fork. Uh, I think this might already even be better than what my Merc is currently wearing. Find item. Okay, well, I don't really need that. But yeah, 136 to 299. This one has very fast attack speed, so probably would do more damage, but my Merc literally is missing one point of dexterity from wearing the Viper Fork, so I'm not going to be able to switch it over uh, in time for the uh, conclusion of this video. But anyway, uh, yeah, so that's uh, Eldritch. It's quick and easy, as you saw there. Uh, Pindle. Uh, Pindle's a bit tougher, uh, but you can get great XP out of him, uh, and the runs are quick, so... Uh, it's a pretty good location to do some leveling. Uh, and also, he drops just about anything in the game. So if you stack MF, uh, you can get some pretty good unique items. Uh, you can get even things like really um, endgame items like Death's Web, Death's Fathom, all that. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to howl the pack away. I can even run down into Halls of Anguish and then come back. Uh, yeah, if I run down into Halls of Anguish and come back, I can reposition my Merc. Um, yeah, there is something I forgot to mention. I'm going to do that after uh, this run. But yeah, the uh, third location that you can farm at is uh, going to be uh, Pits, uh, like I said before. Pits is a level 85 area. It's got uh, plenty of uh, champ packs and uh, no... Uh, physical immunes, so it's a very prime location for you to farm as a uh, singer barb and never have to worry uh, about immunities because uh, your war cry does physical damage and the monsters there are only immune to either cold, lightning, or uh, fire. And that's even if uh, they get uh, stone skin. So you never have to worry about uh, physical immunes, although stone skin can be pretty annoying to deal with. Uh, by the way, uh, I didn't mention this before, but uh, one of the things you may want to consider getting for this character uh, on Switch is a Teleport Staff. Uh, teleport Staff will allow you to reposition yourself and your Merc, but uh, one of the reasons why it's not as uh, crucial to have, at least uh, early on, is you already have a leap to reposition yourself in the middle of a pack if you uh, really need to. And sometimes you might want to have uh, something else on Switch. Like in this case, I got uh, plus the War Cries, but m maybe if you find like Dual Blades of Alibaba, for example, uh, you could have 
or you could do the killing with your main hand, and then uh, on switch you could have items that have uh, an insane amount of uh, magic find, and then you could uh, use find item on a body while you have your MF hand active. Uh, yeah, so that, uh, those are the three locations. So I've, I've done Eldritch and Pindle. I'm gonna uh, now show you a, uh, a Pits run. Oh, actually, just before the Pits run, uh, something I want to point out quickly. Um, where can you get a Teleport Staff? You can get it from Drognan. Uh, actually, wait, what am I doing here? Let me just uh, back out of the game, and then I'm gonna uh, show you something here. So... The easiest way to shop for a teleport staff, like you can get a teleport staff as early as um, normal difficulty act 3. Uh, even my teleport staff is from uh, normal difficulty act 3, I think, because it only has 33 charges, but sometimes uh, Drognan can sell a teleport staff that has uh, up to, I think it's 48 charges. Uh, yeah, and then you can just do this, you just run out, and then run back in, and then keep refreshing his store like this. Until you find the uh, teleport staff that uh, you need. Um, Ask and learn. Again, I already have a teleport staff, so... Uh, this is kind of a moot point, I don't really need any of his teleport staffs, but I'm just showing kind of what the uh, process would be like if I were uh, looking to shop a teleport staff this is the quickest way to do it by finding a map that looks like this where the end where the exit of uh towards the desert is right beside drognan and you just run out and run in although i think uh d2r uh, might have a uh like a refresh uh shop or something like that or maybe actually no i think that's for uh, gambling but anyway um yeah so this is going to be me trying to run uh, the pits here. Uh, yeah, I've already run Eldritch and uh, Pindle. Uh, this is the last area I'm going to demonstrate for you uh, with this budget character. Um, oh, something else I should have pointed out. Uh, whenever I do my Eldritch and Pindle runs, uh, they're fairly quick, so I only uh, do battle commands, then battle uh, orders, and then shout. But... Uh, I think when a lot of players are trying to play as optimally as possible, they'll go battle command twice uh, because the first battle command uh, boosts all skills, including itself. So then when you cast a battle command again, it actually has a slightly longer duration. But again, uh, I don't really care so much about that uh, if my runs are just going to be like... like 20 to 30 seconds anyway, in the case of Eldritch or uh, Pindle. Okay, here you go. Here's a nice uh, pack, just kind of showing what uh, look like pits. And then once they're dead, I would just go and I would just start horking them. Uh, hork is the uh, other name for find item, by the way. Uh, I think it's called Hork because uh, our good old pal, the uh, singer Barb... Or sorry, the, uh, our good old pal, the Barbarian, uh, makes the sound like hork, hork, hork whenever he hits the bodies. Um, that's just the uh, D2 lingo for it. But anyway, yep, so I've killed that pack of monsters with Warcry, and... Okay, I'm just gonna have, like, see, uh, there you go, here's a good example of where Howl comes in pretty handy. I don't really want to deal with the archers. Um, I wanted to solo just the uh, unique monster that was providing everybody might, and everybody else's easy pickings from here on out. So yeah, I did that. Ooh, fall of Topaz, I can hold on to that. Um, yeah. And yeah, this is kind of how the uh, build looks uh, when you're running uh, in pits. Again, I'm not going to do the full run, kind of get the uh, gist of it, uh, how the build plays. Um, for the most part, you should be ignoring these, like, straggler monsters. Uh, what you're looking for would be uh, champ packs. Oh. Okay, that's, uh, there, yeah, there, there it is. Uh, I saw lightning enchanted, so I knew it had to be here some, uh, somewhere. Oh. Yeah, this is why I can use some resistances, but I just don't have any uh, right now. There you go. Uh, Merc killed her in, like, two hits. Uh, that's because he has a relatively strong uh, base weapon. 
Oh, and I lied. Uh, it looks like my Merc did level, so I can actually uh, sub out his current weapon for this Viper Fork that I found on the first run of Eldritch. Yeah, uh, he really is doing some work, and he also has Poison Explosion off of this weapon, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so you get the idea. That's kind of how the Pit's run works. Again, you run at a pack, or these packs, uh, you howl them away until you find a unique monster, and then you kill it and use find item on it, is the gist of it. Okay, so the last thing I want to mention as far as uh, farming is concerned... Oh, you know what? There's one other area that I kind of wanted to uh, briefly show, uh, and that's actually Nightmare Trav. Now, I was saying that uh, Hell Trav is a bit of a stretch while your equipment's kind of crappy, but uh, you can actually... Oh, oh wow. Alright, let's hell. Uh, yeah, this is kind of what the run in Hell would look like, too. Uh, it would... You'd, uh, you would use Howl to scare everybody off, and then you would taunt them back uh, towards you. Uh, that way... Uh, that way they do less damage, and you can just use uh, Warcry on all of them uh, at the same time. And they drop some uh, decent items here and there. Uh, drop a bit of gold and Nightmare, but... Uh, they can also drop some uh, runes and some other goodies. Whoa, almost died to that. Uh, that was kind of scary, but yeah, you can sometimes also drop some skiller GCs. Well, this one gives plus life, but yeah. Uh, here's one area, or Nightmare Trav is one area that you can get started if you just want to get some uh, very basic equipment, um, including runes. So yeah, that's another option that you have as the uh, Warcry Barb. Uh, but yeah. Uh, for the most part, you're probably better off uh, doing even something like Hell Eldritch, because uh, at Hell Eldritch, you can get things like this uh, for your Merc right out uh, right off the bat, or you might be able to find something like a uh, Monarch uh, that you can build Spirit in, so uh, that's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, before I talk about... Uh, the last thing I'm going to really be talking about for this uh, build is like what gear upgrades would look like. Um, but I just want to quickly mention that even though the locations I listed here with uh, Nightmare Trav, Eldritch, Pindle, and Pits uh, are pretty solid early on, what you really want to be doing uh, as you get more gear is uh, Hell Trav. Uh, I think I mentioned that before, but uh, yeah, once you get good enough gear, you want to do Helltrav. Helltrav is a really good location for finding uh, high runes, uh, rainbow facets, and uh, even gold. Like um, they drop a lot of stuff that you uh, want, and then uh, even on players one, uh, they give a sizable amount of loot, better than uh, I think all of the other regular monsters and you can use find item on them. So you're kind of going for quality over quantity, I guess. Uh, with other builds, you're killing like big packs of monsters at a time. Uh, in the case of the singer, you're killing a select few group of monsters, or a select few monsters, but those monsters, uh, you get the most value out of uh, because they're the ones that, you know, in the case of like unique monsters, they drop, um, they'll always drop like two items, and then with find item, you have another chance to get them to drop two more items, right? Like, uh, so yeah, that's kind of the uh, main premise of the build. So yeah, Trav is kind of where you want to be to get, uh, I guess you could say get rich quick, uh, to put it like in a really, really short uh, way. And yeah, uh, Trav is the main goal. Uh, to get to that point, you want you and your Merc to get to a higher level. Um, right now, my Barb is only level 75. Uh, I would say that a good level to aim for is at least level 85, and to have uh, maxed out res on your Merc, and also maybe at least uh, 50 fire res on yourself, and like 2500 life. 
Uh, you also need some FCR resistances and plus skills than what we have here. Like here, yeah, we have the plus skills, um, but we're lacking on FCR. Uh, I think our only FCR item here is stealth, uh, whereas uh, what you ideally would have would be something like this, right? Like here would be a even something like this. You got two spirits that would put you already up to 70 uh, plus this. This is 95. Uh, 95 FCR, and then with one of the uh, rings, if that were an FCR ring, you could hit 105. Uh, but yeah, even now my resistances are pretty awful. Anyway, point here is, uh, yeah, you need to really upgrade all of your gear. Um, you want to make sure that you have good res, you want to make sure you have good FCR, you want to make sure you have good plus skills, uh, you're high level, and you also want your merc to be able to do damage and also survive getting hit by uh, the Hydras and the uh, council members if possible. So again, that's the uh, main goal that you're going to have. Um, and that leads me to gear upgrades. Uh, what gear upgrades should you aim for for this character? All right, because I've talked about uh, the budget uh, variant of it, uh, just shopping most of your equipment. Now, uh, some things that you could consider uh, making going forward. Uh, there is a rune word called Myth. It's Hell, Am, and then Nef. Um, this uh, rune word goes into a three socket uh, armor, and you get plus two to barbarian skill levels. Um, yeah, which is pretty good for boosting. Your war cry damage, uh, battle orders, and find item as uh, usual. Uh, you do lose out on a bit of FCR from stealth and fast run walk, but uh, honestly, the extra damage is worth it if you can uh, get like FCR from other sources. Uh, speaking of upgrades, again, you already saw from earlier. I had the two spirit swords just lying around. Uh, yeah, definitely, you're going to want to switch over to spirit swords ASAP. Uh, the runes themselves uh, might not be so easy to get as compared to the other uh, builds that I've shown, but uh, yeah, you'll eventually find uh, the runes necessary to make spirit uh, and then uh, a base for it. Now, here I have two spirit swords, but if you can find a monarch, then you can make spirit into a spirit monarch uh, as well, and then if you do find a spirit monarch, then you may want to consider respecking if you don't have enough strength. And then uh, for your helm, uh, you're going to want to shop for Artisan's Crown or like any uh, three socket helm. It doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be a plain white one. You can just get it from a vendor like Geed or something. Uh, Geed with like a cow portal would do it. But anyway, uh, yeah, why a three socket crown? Well, I mean, that's actually up for you to decide. Um, because with the three sockets, you have uh, a lot of options. Uh, now, one option is I could put three P Topazes. That's what a lot of people do for their blizz, uh, Blizzard Sorceresses if they want to max out their mef. Another option, uh, if you want to run something like... Uh, if you want to run something like Hell Trav, and you know that your resistances are one big tire fire, then you could do something like this, where you do the Ancients, or you do uh, Act 5 Quest 2, so that you can get uh, the runes for Ancients Pledge, which are Ral or Tal, and then I thank you. Uh, yeah, and then you can here. Let me just go to Hell mode quickly. Okay. Uh, we can see that my resistances to fire are kind of low, uh, and I'm scared that that might cause me some problems when I run Trav, so maybe I'll go like Ral, uh, yeah, maybe I'll go like Ral, Ral, and then Ral, or something like that, or Ral, Ral, Ort, right? Like, I got a few options that I could do for a three socket helm. Um, I think, honestly, your gear, uh, should really depend on what it is you're trying to uh, farm. Um, you don't really need Ral, Ral, Ort, uh, Crown if you're doing something like if you're doing something like uh, Pindle 
or uh, pits. Uh, you probably are just better off with 3P Topazes if it's uh, Pindle, Pits, or Eldritch. But if you're going to you know, do Trav, then yeah, you absolutely need to get your resistances up. You need to make sure your Merch resistances are good too uh, by making something like uh, Smoke Rune Word for yourself and your Merc. Uh, so yeah, just some ideas for gear upgrades. And then also you could try to craft a uh, better belt or you could try to use the uh, one of each P gem with any magic amulet recipe to get like a plus to all resists amulet. So there you go. There's some ideas for you uh, for gear upgrades. Uh, I think we're uh, talked about a lot uh, for this build and what options you have. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, yeah. So again, we covered uh, more or less like where to put your stat and skill points, um, how to like get gold so you can gear up and what items to look out for, uh, some of the upgrades, uh, what to farm, and kind of like the uh, strengths and weaknesses of the build. So that pretty much covers it for the buffest, manliest build in the game, uh, who has crazy amounts of testosterone. It's not the most powerful build, but the uh, Singer Barb is very unique in its uh, play style. Uh, and its uh, utility skills, things like find item and battle orders are always a blast to use. Uh, also, as you get more gear and levels, um, you can even turn your barb into, say, a gold find barb, or like a whirlwind barb, or a zerker, so you have many options if you don't like the singer uh, barb build, which is pretty cool. And yeah, as you get more equipment, uh, you can definitely run tougher areas like Trav for high runes, or Pindle for late game uniques. Um, and it's very efficient to run these areas too, uh, because you have find item, so it's kind of like a two-in-one in a way. So, yeah, that's kind of all I have to say for the Singer Barb. I uh, hope you guys found this uh, guide useful, and uh, that's pretty much going to be it for me. This is D2D2, signing out.